Hi friends, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, big welcome to you. Um, if you're a return viewer, big welcome back. I'm glad you guys are here for another video. Um, just a really quick little intro here. Um, I have noticed I have quite a few new viewers, so I just wanted to kind of reintroduce myself a little bit. So my name's Sarah. I am the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. I always say that in the beginning because um, I primarily do hand dyeing of um, the yarn for Multifarious Nature, but then I also do make a lot of other fun little goodies that are um, like who's it, what's it's to help tools for makers. So um, like analog row counters and little stitch markers and progress keepers and um, all that fun stuff. So you can find that over on my website, multifariousnature.com, and I, of course, include a link to all of that down below in the more info section of the video. So um, as far as introducing myself, <laughs> as I said, so I make all of that, and then um, I have uh, my husband and I live in Southwest Michigan, and absolutely love it here. Um, we moved recently to the country, so we have chickens now, and ducks, and... That's a lot of fun. And our next goal is sheep, so that's on the list as well. And then we have two dogs, and life is always interesting. <laughs> that is for sure. I know uh, my coworkers always love to hear about the um, homestead adventures with the chickens and stuff. So we have um, a garden and everything too now, some growing veggies, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. And it um, definitely keeps you very busy. <laughs> And so I also uh, work uh, basically full-time. I'm considered full-time, but my hours have been shortened, so I don't work Fridays full-time at the moment. Um, so I work Multivarious Nature full-time on Fridays. So I very I work Multivarious Nature quite part-time. Uh, I try to do my best to fit in when I can, but it is hard when you also have like a little homestead going on, you know, two dogs. Um, life is always interesting. But there's my little intro. I just kind of wanted to reintroduce myself to you guys. And if you're new, please say hi in the comments and introduce yourself. I'd love to hear where you're from. Um, you know, what, like what crafts you might be interested in. And it could be any craft. It doesn't have to be knitting or crochet or anything like that. I mean, it could be anything. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you. So hi again. <laughs> All right, we'll get into shop update first. Actually, before even that, I'm gonna talk about what I'm wearing because it's one of my favorite sweaters. I um, I think this was the second or third. It might've been the third sweater I've ever made. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it's definitely my first unspun yarn sweater that I made. So this is the Pinewood sweater. It is a color work. Um, Two color color work, so very easy. If you uh, want a pattern for your first time color work, I would recommend it. Um, there are a few spots that are a little tricky, but if you really take your time and and follow the directions, you can totally figure it out. It's not that bad. Um, and what I mean by that is primarily there is a. I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> There's kind of an interesting patterning going on in the ribbing. The ribbing section of the bottom. So that took a while to get done. I do remember when I made this sweater, it was, <laughs> it was, um, yeah, I, it was kind of a hard time when I made this sweater. Uh, that was, uh, I don't really want to get into that too much because it's kind of, it'll make me sad, but, um, let me just say that it took me a while to get through this sweater and, uh, it's my first time working with unspun yarn, like I said. So this is Plotilope. I used two colors. So this, I think it's called Deep Woods. I think that's the colorway. Deep Woods or something. It's like a, it's a brown. It's a brown and you'll see it's like kind of golden flecks to it. I'm pretty certain I used the recommended needle size. And it was tight. The stitches are very tight. So with Plotilope, you can do a lot, but I did hold it single. I did not hold it double, but I did hold it with something else. So I held the Plotilope single, and then I held a strand of, um, I have some of it. I think it might be somewhere. Here we go. <laughs> 
I held it with Hatfield, which is by Valley Yarns. It's a uh, Webb's yarn store out of the U.S. And they are... It's 100% baby alpaca, super, super soft, lace weight. And I held that um, double, I guess. So I held that double. This is the colorway, actually. Um, this is called Bark. I held this one with the, um, the deep wood colorway. And the other colorway that I used is Plum. Can I get up close so you can see it a little bit better? It's so beautiful. And I held that double with a red color actually and you can see it, it the any of the red that's here is the marling and you can see that red color coming forward so that red is again this exact same as Hatfield but it's their um it's wine I think it was wine is the colorway so I held it double with that I did that because I was concerned of the durability of Hotelope I have totally changed my tune on that so this is an extremely durable sweater I have had this sweater for, let's see, 2021 is when I finished this sweater. I'm pretty sure it was 2021. Pretty positive it was 2021. I have some life things that happened to me during then, so I can remember. It was 2021 when I finished this, and it is a little bit felted under the arms. I have worn this sweater so much. So it felt it a little under the arms because, like I said, it's unspun and, you know, I get hot and things like that and it just kind of felt, but it's not bad at all. It fits like a glove. I love this pattern. It is, um, okay, so this is a high collar. So if you're sensitive to a uh, prickle factor, I don't, would not necessarily recommend wearing Plotolobi like this unless you have, like, high collared shirt if you wear a um, button-up shirt or something with a collar over it that you can put over then you'd probably be fine this doesn't terribly bother me I have kind of desensitized my body a little bit to it but um, if I get really 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 hot this can sometimes make me itch here on my neck but otherwise I, it doesn't bother me on my arms the warmer I get like just comfortably warm it actually makes it even softer feeling. So I do recommend Plotilope, but if you're very sensitive to prickles, then you you're definitely gonna be sensitive to Plotilope. I'm not gonna like <laughs> I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Um, but I bought I think four plates of each color. No, I take that back. Two plates of the red, and then I think I got four plates of or three plates of the brown color. And I ended up using, I mean, it seemed like about half a plate of the purple. And then I think I used like one and a half plates of the brown color. Might have been a little over half, one and a half, like one and three quarter-ish. But it went a long way because you're holding it single. You're not holding it double. When I work with Nutaden, I always hold it double because it's definitely more delicate. But with Plotilope, you can definitely hold it single because it's Icelandic. And Icelandic wool is like really long staple lengths. And the staple is the length of the um, individual hairs. So if it has a long staple length and you do lots of stitches, it's just so strong. When you knit with it, you still have to be careful with how you tension it because it, it does break. Uh, but Nutidin definitely tends to break a lot easier when you're knitting with it. So I have to say... Um, like I said, love this pattern <laughs> and I, I think I went off on a tangent talking about this pattern a lot longer than I expected, but I really love this pattern. The designer, so like I said, it's the Pinewood sweater. The designer is Andrea Yatman, or Yatman, 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 I think it's Yatman. And it's just beautiful. I love this, this bit right here. It's kind of, um, laurel looking. It kind of looks like a laurel wreath and I just absolutely love it and um yeah I can't say enough nice good things about it I have to say <laughs> absolutely loved it so now we'll get into shop update so shop update is um well I've got two things so advent 
like I said, Advents. So Advents will be shipping out here. Very, very excited. I'm going to be shipping them out next Friday. Next Friday, you guys. Next Friday, all pre-ordered Advents are shipping out. So you'll give them plenty of time that um, when the first weekend of December comes, you will have them. And <laughs> so for those of you that are on the fence, you're not sure, you don't want to buy it until you know exactly what colors they are. I completely understand. I mean, it is an investment. So if you're one of those people who really needs to see the colorways before you buy it, and you don't care that it ruins the surprise because it's going to ruin the surprise, <laughs> Then I actually create a video for you guys. So if you go to my videos and um, you'll see it there. I'm not going to link it below because I do not want someone to accidentally click on it if they do not want to see it. So if you just go to my videos, like if you click on my name, Multiverse Nature, the company's name, if you click on that and then click videos, it'll show you all the videos. It's the last video that I made before this video that is currently up. And uh, yeah, if you click on that, it'll say Advent Spoiler. It's very clearly labeled Advent Spoiler because I want to make sure that there is no surprise. I talk with like forever and a half about the fact that it is a spoiler. I don't want it to ruin the surprise. So if you're totally okay with the surprise being ruined, <laughs> then I highly recommend checking it out. That way it can help you decide if you aren't sure and then you see the colors and you go oh my gosh I absolutely love those colors I want them um, they are sock sets like I said they are um, four 100 gram skeins with four 20 gram skeins with it um, complementing or contrasting colorways and you could totally make something with all of those um, it's well over 2200 some yards you could definitely do that you can make whatever you want with that um, I, they, they would look beautiful together, but they are definitely designed to be their own individual sets. So kind of keep that in mind. But like I said, if you're really on the fence and you're not sure, and that might help you decide, I that's why I created that video for people like you. So definitely hop on over there and check that out if you want to see this year's 2023 sock advent. And um, yeah, that's a spoiler. So like I said, I just have a couple available still. So if you want one or you want to give it as a gift, definitely make sure you hop on over there and nab it as soon as you're able because once they're gone, they're gone. And yeah, I do still have, I think, um, one or two of the prior years as well. So two years ago, I did um, a non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool advent, which I absolutely loved. That's a 25 colorway advent. And then there's um, the following year I did a fade and um, yeah, I have videos about all my advent projects and everything as well. If you kind of want to know what those advents were all about as well, you can definitely check that out in my prior videos. So now we'll get into finished objects. So funny story about my finished object. I can't show you my finished object. The good and bad of <laughs> working on a sample for someone is that it's fun because you get to work on a sample for someone, but then the hard part is that you cannot hold on to it for too long, and I had to ship it to her. So I actually shipped it out this morning, so that's why I don't have it to record to show you guys, but I will have photos on a Ravelry page. I will create a quick little project for it, and I will put a photo on there. So I want to show you guys the colorway, though. I'm not going to tell you the name because don't know if this is a special colorway for her show um, that she's coming up on, but the designer, the dyer behind this colorway is um, the, well, the pattern was Rao Mitts. I talked about it in my last video, um, my last podcast video. <laughs> and then I used Supernova Dye Works yarn in this colorway. I'm not going to tell you the name because, again, I don't know if this is like a special colorway for her show that's coming up. So she gets to announce that, but I just wanted to show you guys. It's so beautiful. Such a pretty color. It's kind of primarily a teal, but it's definitely speckled and absolutely beautiful. And I really enjoyed working with it. It is a single DK weight and I've never worked with that before. So that was a lot of fun. Very, very soft. It's Merino, hundred percent superwash Merino and it was a lot of fun working with her. I mean, I only worked out for two weeks and sent it back to her really quick, but um, 
I don't really, it was a fun experience, so I definitely would love to be a sample knitter for her again, or others, but um, I don't want to do it too often because it is obviously a, a pressure knitting because it needs to be done by a certain time. Um, but yeah, I would definitely consider doing that again. Okay, and we'll get into our works in progress here. I've got two works in progress, believe it or not, because I finished those mitts last weekend and I just had to wait for them to block and then I weaved in the end. So um, really, I actually got a lot of time to knit on other things this week, which was awesome. So I worked on my birch pullover again by Miss um, Andrea Maury is the designer. And I did make more progress yet again. I didn't make, I did not make any mistakes this week. Woohoo! <laughs> I say that's a win because each week I feel like I make a mistake, but this time I did not. That's okay. Mistakes are okay because that's how you learn. So maybe that's why I'm not making mistakes anymore because I've learned, right? So I am just trucking away on it. It is a half fisherman's rib pattern. If you've never done half fisherman's rib, this is an excellent first time pattern because, um, you know, it does have, obviously there's some, um, raglan increases going on, but I still think it's a really good beginner pattern. Now, should this be your first sweater ever knit? I don't recommend that. I do think it would be a little complicated because there's a lot going on, but I do think for a first time half fisherman's rib pattern, or if you've never done brioche, um, I still think this would be a great, like, intro. This is not brioche, but brioche is a tuck stitch pattern, is my understanding. It's my understanding. I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> my understanding is that is um, considered a tuck stitch, so so is half fisherman's rib. So it gives you this really squeaky, floofy... Love it. So here's where I was last week. So I did have some nice progress. I've been working on this on my lunches and then in the evening, um, many times after we eat dinner, I've been working on this as well. So and my TV knitting, um, I still have to kind of pay attention to what I'm doing though, because that's where I usually make a boo-boo is if I'm not paying attention, but I really enjoy it. So there's quite a bit I still have to get done of the body, but I just am very much enjoying this, very much enjoying it. It's, I'm looking forward to wearing it too. I think it's going to be a very comfortable sweater. It's very soft. This is using Old Mill Yarns. Um, it's 100% merino. I don't believe it's superwash. I think it's just it's merino, so it hasn't been processed as much. You can see there's a really nice halo on here. And I feel like it's not superwash because superwash has um, kind of a, there's a distinct difference. This feels like, okay, it's gonna sound weird because merino is not a toothy, it's not a toothy wool. <laughs> it's the wool that most people can wear. If you're sensitive to wool, many people, the majority can still wear merino. And this one, I feel like, I say toothy because I just feel, it feels more like you're petting a sheep. Does that sound right? <laughs> is that weird to say? When I pet this sweater, it feels more like I'm petting a sheep than when I pet a ball of superwash wool. Okay, does that make sense to you? <laughs> so it's not toothy, it just feels more like untreated wool. Except it's not, um, doesn't have lanolin in it really. This does not have much lanolin. It's definitely been washed quite a bit um, when it was spun at the mill, but I don't know. I feel like it's not super wash. I could be wrong. I could totally be wrong. But I, I don't think it's it's super wash. So again, this old mill yarn, they're out of um, Allegan, Michigan and Baker Studio. Um, Baker Allegan Studios is where the old mill yarn warehouse is that they sell this yarn. And it's I'm pretty positive it's only open during Michigan Fiber Festival each year reiterating that I'm giving away all my secrets this is where I find my my secret stash yarn <laughs> it's not a secret anymore but I do love to give them business because they're awesome people so there you go it is a, a pretty warm gray too if you can't tell that it's kind of like a yeah 
maroon gray kind of a brown undertone to it it's beautiful so I'm, I'm you can see I'm in the neutrals at the moment because I'm going to show you the next one I'm working on and I'm all about it I'm all about the neutrals I'm normally all about the color but fall hit and now I'm like neutral okay so this is um Tangled. Okay, <laughs> the project is Wildflowers Path. Wildflowers Path by Melody Hoffman. This is my second Wildflowers Path sweater. I made one out of Plutolope, just held, uh, I think I held a double. I held the Plutolope double. And again, super durable. I love, love, love that sweater. I have worn it so many times. It's kind of a cream color, it's like an off white. Um, this one is like I said, my second one, I am holding it. So this is actually held triple. The new to den is held double. And then I am holding it with a, actually, I lied again. <laughs> I'm holding this quadruple. So I have two strands of new to den. This is the Vaja, I might be saying this wrong. <laughs> Vaja and Hem. Um, it is a very neutral colorway. It's a creamy kind of oatmeal color and it has little flecks of brown going through it. Um, I, I've only worked with Nutiden one other time and it's very delicate in general, but I feel like this colorway is even more delicate than the other one that I did. So I definitely am glad I'm holding it double, but I'm super glad <laughs> that I am holding it with two strands of Old Mill Yarn. This is another type of Old Mill Yarn. So these all came, um, Old Mill Yarn, Old Mill Yarn yarn primarily comes on cones. So I get a lot of it, like some serious yardage. So this, this I would consider cobweb. So this is double, it's two strands, but I would consider this to be cobweb thickness because this is a single strand right there. Like that's, I would consider that cobweb. That is not really lace weight. I would say that's cobweb. So I've not really ever worked with cobweb before. So learning curve, it's definitely fragile, but um, I'm holding it double. Like I said, this is a blend. It's a marine, I think it's, pretty sure it's alpaca, nylon. It has like a bunch of properties in it. I think it's alpaca, nylon, possibly merino. You can see the really pretty halo on here from the little alpaca bits. It's very soft and quite beautiful. It is a chocolatey brown color. I also have the same blend that I got this year. So this I got last year from um, the old mill yarn sale. And then I got one this year that is like a dark, dark, dark gray blue color. I think it's considered gray, but it looks gray blue. It's really beautiful. So this is a dark brown, chocolatey brown. And again, I'm holding that double. So I'm holding two of each strand together and then we're knitting. So this is what that color looks by itself. You saw this one is much more of a chocolatey dark brown, but then with this all held together, it creates this really cool effect. So I love, love marling yarn. It creates one of a kind kind of looks of colors because you're mixing different yarns together. So I don't know if you can kind of see this, but there's this really neat depth to the texture on this pattern now that normally it would be there, but it wouldn't have the depth as much. Um, it's just really fascinating. So I love the way this is looking. It actually, ironically enough, looks a lot like what Melanie is wearing. So this is Melanie Hoffman's version. It's kind of an oatmeal color, which mine's definitely an oatmeal color, but because of that brown, it adds just that extra layer of depth. So I'm really looking forward to having this. Um, I know it's going to whip up pretty darn quick. Like I said, I've primarily been working on this um, just a little here and there. And I basically knit this entire portion 
in this past week. So it goes really fast. These are big needles. I think they're a size nine or 10. Nine, size nine. So they're a decent size needle. So you definitely, um, you'll get through it quick. So very much enjoying it. I like it because like, if you've never worked with unspun yarn, it slows down your knitting process. And I talked about that in a couple episodes back. I'm really trying to slow down my knitting process, take time knitting, focusing on the stitching. Oh, so good. I'm drinking some um, more David's tea. I swear I'm not sponsored. I purchased the David's tea advent last year and I still have a bunch of it left. So I'm just kind of like, I. I call it tea relay. I, I like all of the, the different teas, but I have them all in a little basket. I just shove my hand in there and I just pick one randomly. And this is one I haven't had yet this year. And it is a, um, it's hot chocolate flavored. It's so good. So David's tea, um, I looked at this year's advent and I, I have to say I wasn't as impressed. It's more like, um, kind of your, your typical herbal teas. And it's, um, it's called World, I think it's like the World Teas of the World, but it's kind of your typical teas. Now, if you're like a purist with teas, you probably will like that. But um, the advent last year was more like fun flavors and stuff, like holiday oriented flavors, like Frosty the Snowman and a sleigh ride and like all these fun, like hot toddy, all these fun flavors. And this one's hot chocolate. And so it's a chocolate flavored tea and then there's actual pieces of dark chocolate in it oh it's so good it's just it's so good <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry not sorry I love it <laughs> anyway um fabulous all right but anyway side tangent um yeah I definitely recommend working with unspun yarn if you want to slow down your knitting process and really get closer to working from raw yarn and wool so this is the closest to um this is my gateway <laughs> this is my gateway to buying a fleece because I started knitting with uh, Nutiden, no, not Nutiden, Plutalope. Plutalope was my gateway. So I worked with Plutalope and then I was like, oh my gosh, that is like, I'm hugging a sheep. I, I loved it so much. And so that was, then I bought a fleece and I started that whole thing. And then I finally was able to splurge on some Nutiden because it's expensive and it comes all the way from Sweden. So, and they don't make a lot of it. So you kind of have to like jump on it when you do. And it, like I said, not cheap. And when I bought it, because I was paying for it to be sent here to the US, I bought quite a bit of it. So I bought three sweater quantities of Nutsden. So I made a sweater out of it last year, which is that's when I bought it. And now I am working on my second sweater and I actually have a third sweater's quantity in the Lucra colorway, which is really beautiful. Like chocolatey brown with some like yellows through it. It's really cool looking. So anyway, yeah. Definitely recommend it. Of course I recommend new to dim, but I know that's hard to come by um, and not easy to get your hands on. So if you don't have that, I definitely recommend Plotilope. I have knit this exact pattern in Plotilope and it worked out so well. And you can get that at many stores. One of them is webs. You can go to yarn.com and you can totally buy some from their website. Um, the other website I have had excellent success ordering from, which actually is from out of the US. So got to take that with a grain of salt. But when they have sales, um, actually from Alifos, so I've purchased from them before and they had a great deal and I really enjoyed working with them. So I did find that if you buy more than, I think four, four or more, I don't know if under four, but four or more of the plates of one color, they'll be stuck together. <laughs> so you actually have to separate them. So that was kind of cool. Never experienced that before. Anyway, so, and that's straight from Iceland that it gets sent to you. So that's kind of a cool thing. But if you want to support the U.S. Um, lo or local stores, you can see if your local store carries Plotilope. My local yarn store does not carry it. So I do have to go outside of, Mich or not Michigan, but outside of my local yarn stores. Um, I 
don't know. There might be a, a store in Michigan somewhere that carries it. I just don't know of one. So if you do, if you're from Michigan and you know of a yarn store that carries Plutolope, let me know because I would love to support my local yarn stores and get more Plutolope at some point. I am trying really hard not to buy more yarn. <laughs> I am trying really hard. It is not easy, you guys. It's not easy. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> so I guess we'll get into life update end of things. Not a lot. Um, all right, so if you're still with me, thank you for sticking around. <laughs> and yeah, we've got, okay, so we have chickens, like I said. And one of our chickens, the bantam. So if you're not familiar with bantams, which I wasn't until we got someone, they are mm, about so big, full grown. Like that's full grown. They're little. They're very little. They're teeny tiny little chickens. <laughs> and they're feisty little stinkers, but they're teeny tiny. Very friendly. Um, I say feisty, but they're not mean. <laughs> but uh, our little bantam, so we have four full-size chickens, and one of them is an Americana, so she's huge. She's like the biggest of the chickens, and she's got these poofy cheeks that call, we call her Chippy because she's like a chipmunk. Absolutely adorable. And sh they all are laying eggs now, so all of them, except for one of the ducks. One of the ducks is not laying yet, so they're all laying eggs. And that little bantam, our little white bantam, she's so teeny and gets all cute and poofy when she lays down, is nesting. She's showing nesting, um, which is really hilarious because her eggs are teeny tiny and bantams do not lay eggs regularly like other chickens, but it's really cute that apparently that's what she's doing now, which um, luckily she's not like aggressive. If you pick her up, she'll move, but yeah, she's nesting. So apparently when uh, my husband went down there to get eggs today. She was, she was nesting on all the eggs. There, she had like six eggs under her and that would be quite the feat because for them to fit under her, this little bitty body, she probably had to stretch herself out quite far to cover these eggs because some of these eggs are pretty big. So but that's pretty entertaining, I have to say. These are like the tails from the homestead as, as uh, like I said, my work likes to call it. But, so that's really, really cute. And, um, Oh, other exciting news. Uh, my husband's been working on my electric drum carter, which is so exciting. He's made some great progress on that. So I am looking forward to it. I am patiently awaiting. I want it so bad, but I'm patiently waiting because I know he has lots of projects he's working on too. Um, it's hard not to have lots of projects when, you know, he has things he enjoys doing as well. Um, he's very mechanically inclined. So he has projects he's working on, and uh, and then that's one of the projects, but that's, you know, something that is on my list. It's more on his list, but it's not his, like, things he has to get done. So um, he works on it when he's able, which I definitely appreciate, because that is going to be so helpful um, with all these wonderful fleeces that I have. I do not mind taking the time to go through and hand card them, but it's going to take me a while, because I have... A pretty serious stash of fleeces and I I am not ashamed of it I am not ashamed of it but it's getting ridiculous because it's gonna take me a long time to work through them so um, my goal is when he finishes the drum carter which he's still ways out before I'll finish it but when he finishes it I'm I am gonna just go to town on those fleeces and I'm really excited because that will make the whole spinning process so much faster because the spinning takes a while in and of itself but carding takes some time and I am I kind of I feel strongly that <laughs> everybody has their own opinion and that is totally their right but for myself I definitely feel like there are certain things I need to decide do I need to do it this way or can I do it this way and for me um, using the drum carter to card the fleece and um, and process it that portion of the process quicker it's is I'm okay with that primarily it's not the time I mean the time is definitely a factor 
but it's the um, repetitive motion. So I'm trying to be better about not causing repetitive motion. I, I realize I'm saying this and I, I knit. So <laughs> I am trying to be mindful of repetitive motion. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, the word is not harm. That's not the right word, but like injury. There we go. I got it. Uh, repetitive motion injuries. So when you knit, obviously that's a repetitive motion. So you are supposed to frequently take breaks and like stretch, you know, do things like this. I am not a physical therapist. So do not, do not follow me, like look up a physical therapist telling you what to do, but you're supposed to stretch pretty frequently so that you don't cause yourself an injury. And if you're carding wool, that's very repetitive motion and it's strain on your wrist, strain on your arm, um, definitely your wrist though, your hands. It's a lot of hard work on your hands. So I definitely recommend um, if that's something that you're worried about that you can do it here and there, of course, but if you're gonna be doing a really large batch, for example, I have a fleece that was over, over six pounds of fleece. Um, it's a very big fleece, the biggest fleece I've ever purchased. And I already made two skeins out of that fleece and I still have a ridiculous amount of it left. Um, I really would like to work with the drum carter to get through that. So that way I can start spinning it more because out of all the process, I enjoy spinning the most. Carding is not bad, but I really enjoy spinning. So if I can do the things that I don't enjoy as much quicker and more efficiently and cause less injury. I'm all for it. So these are things that I've learned from my little bit of experience <laughs> that I've been doing of uh, creating yarn and all that wonderful stuff. Spinning. It's a whole nother thing. So that's pretty much it, you guys. I don't know what else. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment below or ask a question. I always love chatting with you guys and I look forward to hearing from you. I hope you're doing well. What are you working on uh, in your neck of the woods? Is it very fall by you? It is fall in full swing here. We have got color everywhere and mm, I'm taking it all in, taking it all in. I love fall, autumn, I love autumn. I don't mind winter when I can be cozy and I don't have to drive anywhere, but autumn, mm, if I could cozy up in autumn for a while, I could do that. I could definitely do that. <laughs> All right. I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing, one other thing before I leave. Um, actually, I think it was a couple weeks ago and I don't know if I mentioned it, but, um, so my husband's aunt, she actually donated a bunch of yarn to me that I can use to make things out of. So I am really excited because a lot of it um, she has is um, kind of acrylic based and fun colors and mixed colors and textures. And I would love to make more donation items and those would be perfect for it. So I have a um, Addy King, it's one of those knitting machines. I got that for Christmas a few years back for my husband and or for my, yeah, that was our first Christmas here after our, our first Christmas when we were married. I think I'm pretty positive that was my Christmas gift. So um, I love using that to make hand knit hats for donations and it, I, I've got it down to a pretty good fine science that in about, about a half hour, if I'm like cranking serious, I can get a, a horse to weight hat done for donation. So my goal is to go through a lot of those and crank them up. If I can't do it all this year, I'll definitely try to do it in the next, next year too. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. I do enjoy making donations. Um, especially if I can use the machine because then I can get them done quickly because otherwise knitting it by hand can take longer and again it just puts stress and pressure on trying to finish which 
leads to the repetitive mush injuries. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are doing good and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care. Bye.